As soon as Chanel number two's parents learned that their daughter's dead body had been found, they went on a cruise to celebrate. That's how much they hated this dead bitch. So when it fell to me to host an open casket funeral and fulfill her dying wish of being cremated and shot into space, I was like, yeah, okay. So stupid. This is what happens to sneaky backstabbers. Just so you know, I took all your clothes. It's too bad you had to die before we found out what ethnicity you are. That's being Chanel number two. God, I love working you so much. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today because a backstabbing little bitch got exactly what was coming to her. Hello everyone and welcome to Rainbow Rocket. And that's right, I have a new channel name and all new content that I'll be bringing you this week, starting with the death of Gardevoir. <laughs> well, we have a ways to go before February 23rd, but according to this new set, from the looks of it, Gardevoir is going to be DOA come February 23rd. And I'm going to go over some of the cards that are gonna make that possible. I am so excited about this set. I think it's probably gonna be one of the best sets we've ever had as far as the TCG goes as far as playable cards in the standard format and even some cards that affect the expanded format. So let's get into some of the cards. So I'm just going to start off by showing you guys the booster product. A notable thing about this is that it features a lot of Shino Pokemon and a lot of people are speculating that this might mean that we're going to head into remake season. If that is true or not, I am completely uncertain, but I am excited nonetheless. So let's start off with our first card. So we have the probably the most hyped card out of the set is Soul Galeo GX. We got a new one. It has 250 HP and the ability Shining Main. Each of your Pokemon has no weakness. Turbo Strike for two colorless does 120 damage. Attach two basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Prominence GX heal all damage from each of your Pokemon. Weakness to fire times two, resistance to psychic, and a retreat cost of two. This card is probably everything that the Soul Galeo deck could have ever wanted in a card. I mean, it gives you protection from fire decks such as Volcanion. It allows you to accelerate for that Sun Steel Strike. It heals all of your Pokemon just in case you're in a grindy matchup. And its retreat cost is kind of null and void because you have the other Soul Galeo that has Ultra Row and they just synergize so well. This thing also two shots anything and 120 damage attached to basic energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. That's already an a similar to the attack that they were running with Rayquaza. And it's kind of like you get Rayquaza all in one plus you get it a way to protect yourself from those pesky fire decks. And this thing easily one-shots Gardevoir with the two energy investment, or you can still use Sunsteel Strike to hit Gardevoir for 460 damage. Soul Burst GX is still ridiculously good, and these two cards are just sort of a match made in heaven. So yes, as the video noted, Gardevoir is probably going to RIP upon the arrival of this deck. I just don't see how you have any type of reasonable or good matchup against Against Soul Galeo with Gardevoir and plus it gets a lot of other tools that we're going to talk about moving forward so I'm definitely very excited for this Soul Galeo GX and I'm excited to see what it's going to do in the format so next card moving on we're going to look at Magnezone so as I said earlier metal is being pushed very very hard in this set so uh, let's read Magnezone and see what it does Magnezone is a metal Pokemon 150 HP ability magnetic circuit as often as you like during your turn before you attack, you may attach a metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Right. So, yeah. Thanks a lot for giving us Blastoise, <laughs> basically. So we have gotten the Deluge Energy Rain, however you want to say it, in the form of a metal Pokemon, as if metal wasn't being pushed enough with that Solgaleo we just reviewed, we have Magnezone now to also add to the fun. And if you were watching the London Internationals, metal decks were made a pretty big impact. We had a Savali uh, metal toolbox deck make the finals and it did pretty well there. So this also has Zap Cannon as 130. That can knock out a Gardevoir if you really need to. Um, it has weakness to fire, resistance to psychic, and a retreat cost of two. So this is going to be able to do some fun things. Anytime that something in Pokemon says you can do it as often as you like, especially something like attaching energy, it's usually a good card. 
All right, so moving on from Magnezone, we're gonna look at some more cards coming out here. So these are the prison cards. So we have Solgaleo and then we also have Lunala. All right, so Solgaleo is a basic Pokemon. It has 160 HP. So the Prism Star rule says that you can't have more than one with the same name in your deck. So think of a spec star Pokemon from the past if you ever had the pleasure of playing with those. And then if it is discarded, you put it into the Lost Zone. So they have actually brought the Lost Zone back. So that is something that is very interesting. So we have Rising Star. For each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a Metal Energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Are you kidding me? So this means that I can play this. It's a basic Pokemon. I can run into that Solgaleo deck I was just talking about. And if my opponent has six Pokemon in play, sure, I just attach a metal and, and, and grab up to six energy out of my discard pile. No big deal, right? <laughs> it has Corona Impact as 160, can attack during your next turn. I don't think hitting those four metals are going to be hard considering its ability and considering what Solgaleo GX can do. All right, so let's look at Lunala. Lunala is a basic Pokemon 160, Prism Star Rule. Uh, full Moon Star for one Psychic for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. It does the same thing as Solgaleo for a Psychic. And then Side Storm does 20 damage times the amount of all energy. So it's kind of like a more expensive Xerneas. And again, Solgaleo is kind of like the Bridesmaid. I mean, excuse me, Lunala is usually the Bridesmaid in the situation when it comes to two of them. They have just really been giving Lunala the shaft. But I think what's more interesting here is the, the, the re-implementation of the Lost World. So this is something that was back in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and even Platinum. And it was something that I feel was mostly associated at first with Giratina, and then it kind of expanded to other cards. And it kind of is like a remove from play zone. So think about Exile and Magic Gathering, or, you know, remove from play in Yu-Gi-Oh! Banish. That's the, the, there we go, the Banish zone in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, the Lost, there were certain cards that could interact with the Lost World. There were certain win conditions. Uh, Gengar was a very popular card. Miu... Prime was a very popular card. So I'm glad to see the Lost World return. And I feel as though, you know, I've been saying that we need some more improvement in card design. And I think them re-adding the Lost World is going to give us what we need as far as that. All right. So moving right along. There's just so many good cards in this set. Let me tell you. All right. So we also get a Dusk Main Necrozma GX and a Dusk Don Wings Necrozma GX. So, so many Pokemon based around Solgaleo and Lunala. Um, these are basic Pokemon because they are technically Necrozma. So, the Dusk Main Necrozma GX does 109, uh, has 190 HP. Claw Slash for three colorless, the 60 damage. Meteor Tempest, three metal and a colorless, 220, discard three energy. Eclipse Sun GX, 250. This attack can only be used if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. Interesting. Don Wing, the Crosma GX is Psychic Type 180. Ability Invasion. Once per turn, before you attack, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch this Pokemon with your active Pokemon. It has Splash of Darkness, 3 Psychic for 120. This attack's damage isn't affected by resistance. It also has Eclipse Moon, 3 Psychic 180. It only can be used if you have more Pirates cards remaining and then prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon. Weakness to Darkness, resistant to fighting, and retreat cost of 2. So, when I first read the Duskmane Necrozma, I was kind of like, okay, um, I don't really see any use for it. And then Magnezone was released, and I'm just kind of like, oh my god, is this Black Ballista all over again with, uh, with Blastoise, which was a really, really good deck. But however, we don't have superior energy retrieval in our format like we did back then. Uh, so it was just so easy for you to discard two cards and then put the four basic energy down and just hit for that high damage. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But I think that... Uh, this that combination makes it a lot stronger than what I initially thought. And then Dong Wings and the Krasma, oh my goodness, we basically get Russian back to standard. And I think this is a very interesting ability to have, uh, considering that we have cards such as Galissapod that would really enjoy something that would be able to just rush in every turn, retreat back, and reset your first impression. So I think Dawn Wings and Necrozma might find his way in some decks. Now, it's not as a versatile attacker as Keldeo, but I mean, come on. Some decks do just play Keldeo for the ability, let's be honest. All right, so moving right along. Look at all these playable cards. It's just ridiculous. All right, so now we also have the Luxray line that has been revealed. So Shinx is a lightning Pokemon at 50 HP. And you know if I have to review the line. Like, <laughs> Shinx is a lightning Pokemon, 50 HP. 
Uh, it has ability Runaway Evolution. This Pokemon can evolve the turn it was played if it's the first turn of the player going second. So if you're going second and you start Shinx, uh, I don't know if you can evolve it if you start it, but if you're going second and you bench it, you definitely can evolve it. Luxio has uh, ability uh, 180 HP, no abilities, and then it has the attack Electromagnetic Barrier. 30 damage, your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. Um, excuse me? Seismato is, is, I mean, Quaking Punch is back in, I mean, we already have Quaking Punch in the form of, um, Noivern, more or less, but Noivern is weak to, uh, <laughs> is weak to fairy Pokemon, and so that's not happening, but the fact that we have a easily accessible turn to Quaking Punch for one energy is a big deal, and so you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, it's only, a uh, stage one, it has 80 HP, it's very vulnerable, uh, but let's look at Luxray. So Luxray has 150 HP, has the ability Intimidating Fang. As long as this po is your active Pokemon, any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 30. And then Voltage Arrow, discard all lightning energy. It does 150 to one of your opponent's Pokemon, and it has a free retreat cost, weakness to fighting of two, and then resistance to metal. So when I first saw these cards, I was kind of like, okay, you know, this is cool. Um, what is a way that this could possibly be abused? So I asked, I was like, is there a Pokemon in the format that allows you to use your um, former stages attacks? And they were like, yeah, Cel Shining Celebi. And so at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, this this is going to be pretty good. So I can go into Luxio, and then I can evolve into Luxray, 150 body that resists all attacks by 30. Uh, we just were talking about how metal might be popular. So I would resist all metal attackers by 50. Not saying that that's going to do much considering that Solgaleo GX can hit for 230. But I mean, if they're using, if they're primarily using the other one, the 120, you would only take 70 from those hits. And at that point, they're three shotting you. You could probably play Max Potion pretty easily. A free retreat cost means that you could probably use some things such as Nihilego and abuse that. I think this is going to be a very, very interesting deck. When is item lock not good? I mean, come on. This is something I'm definitely going to be playing. I absolutely love item lock and I feel like it always should be in our formats. All right, so we're still not done. This set is so good. All right, so we're going to look at these three cards at once. So Drip Blim is a psychic Pokemon, 110 HP. It has damage transport, move four damage counters from each of your opponents, your Pokemon to your opponent's active. Wheel win, 80 damage, your opponent switches their active Pokemon, uh, and then weakness to lightning, resistance to fighting, and then retreat of one. So this is just important because Tapu Koko is a very popular card. If they Koko spread once to everything, this thing just basically says nope and puts everything back. Now, I don't know if it's going to be worth the investment, but it's definitely something that's interesting to look at. We also have Pachirisu, who is a lightning Pokemon with an HP 100, excuse me, 70. It has Static Generator for each of your bench Pokemon with a Nuzzle attack. Search your deck for a basic lightning energy and attach it. Nuzzle flip a coin if has your opponents is paralyzed, and then fighting, weak to fighting, resistance to metal, retreat of one. Now, and there is a Pikachu in Generation with Nuzzle, so that could possibly accelerate it. I don't think Generations is standard legal, correct me if I am wrong, and I don't know if it would be a competitive deck and expand it, but it's just something I did want to touch on. And then finally, we have Weavile, which I think is an interesting card. It has Dark Command. It does 50 damage times the number of your opponent's Pokemon with abilities. Uh, weakness to fighting, resistance to psychic, icy wind does 10, puts them to sleep. You won't be using that much probably, and HP of 90. Now, this is very interesting because I'm thinking back, every deck, everybody plays Lele, um, people, Zoroark is getting really, really popular, and there are certain decks that you can just kind of catch off guard with this ability. Not quite sure how good it is just yet, but it is definitely something to keep an eye out for and to keep in mind. We have a Weavile that does 60 damage right now to all Pokemon with abilities, and it's... It, it was trying to see some play, but it just couldn't quite get there. All right. So, moving right along here. We're going to get into some uh, trainers and supporters. So, we have Looker. And Looker is back. Last time we had Looker's Investigation. Uh, this isn't quite that. It says, draw three cards from the bottom of your deck. And then Looker's Whistle. And I think this is what kind of makes this card something you want to look at. Search your deck for up to two Looker. Reveal them and put them in your hand and shuffle your deck. So, this is kind of somewhat of a mini engine. So, you can play Looker's Whistle. Grab some supporters that you're going to want to use later. I don't think this is going to be good in every deck. But I do think this could potentially 
potentially see play with Zorark because you can trade those whistles when they become of no value or you can use whistle, thin your deck by two, grab a looker, play looker, draw three, discard looker, trade, and draw two. And that's just like you, you, you've thinned your deck by three cards. Well, excuse me, you've thinned your deck by two and then you've replaced those two cards with a potential, you know, with five cards. And then on top of that, if you draw into Looker, you can play more Looker's Whistles because if you draw into them later, they're great trade fodder. So I think that this is an engine that could work really, really well, well in Zoroark. And I don't think many people highlighted that. And that's something I think we should pay attention to. <laughs> Look, I'm finding use for everything in this set. It's just a lot of good stuff. All right, so then here we go, Volkner and Cynthia. So I'm gonna start with Volkner. It's probably the, the least impressive of the two. It says, search your deck for an item card with, in a lightning energy, reveal them and put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. Uh, so Volkner to me is like a watered down Karina and I am so sick of them printing these cards that are just functional reprints more or less of other cards. And yes, this isn't Karina, but I think it is somewhat strictly worse. I think it is better to get a Pokemon uh, over an energy any time of the day. You know, we play cards to search Pokemon. We don't really play cards to search energy. And if that's the case, I can always just get Professor's Letter off the off Karina if I really wanted to and still grab energy and get a Pokemon so I am just not crazy about Volkner yes you can get an Ultra Ball but I mean Karina is much stronger when she was able to like she can net you a Pokemon and a computer search so we'll just have to see what uses Volkner has quite frankly and then we also have Cynthia um, so Cynthia is a functional reprint of Professor Oak's new theory and a lot of people have been wanting this to come back and people are like you know this but my thing is this I this is what annoys me about Pokemon you guys print it Oaks kept printing Shauna, then turn right around and print Oaks again. Why did you even print Shauna in the first place? Just why could you just keep Oaks? But yeah, I love Cynthia. I know her full art is going to be bonkers uh, as far as how much it's going to cost. And I think this is the right step, uh, step in the right direction, excuse me, into phasing out Juniper and Sycamore because I have to play another standard with Juniper and Sycamore. I am going to scream. Love those cards, but it's time for them to go. So I think that Cynthia is very welcome back. I just wish they would come out with some supporters that are more unique. But I can't complain too much because, baby, let me tell you, this is Cyrus Prism Star. All right, so we also have Prism Star supporters. So th these are going to be pretty, pretty broke. I'm just going to be honest. You only can play one of them in your deck. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is you can't be a secret because, again, if it's discarded from anywhere, uh, it's going to be put into the Lost Zone. I don't know if there are going to be things that are going to be able to grab these out of the Lost Zone in the future, but I'm hoping for it because, again, I love this creative card design. This is what the game really needs. So this says, this card can only be used if your active Pokemon is water or metal. Your opponent chooses two of their bench Pokemon, then your opponent shuffles the, their other bench Pokemon and all cards attached to them back into their deck. First of all, let me just say, RIP to any Skyfield deck when you play this card. I mean, certain decks can bounce back pretty easily, but this could be potentially black breaking depending on what turn of the game is and what how the board is looking. Yeah, I'm going to let you pick two Pokemon and then you're going to send six back. Um, that doesn't sound pretty fair to me unless all, unless four of those cards are Shaman and maybe two are Tapu Lele. Maybe you might feel okay about that. But if you're playing a Skyfield deck, odds are you want those those to be out there. Not only that, um, there's just a several decks that can use this. Like Greninja Break. Um, Greninja is already a deck that tends to outgrind its opponents pretty easily. Um, uh, I could just think of a turn of setting up a nasty giant water shuriken KO and then forcing your opponent, um, or excuse me, forcing your opponent to choose two Pokemon, bouncing three back, and then like setting up a giant sh water shuriken on two on one of the Pokemon on the bench. It just sounds like it could be something that is really, really nasty. Uh, so that is something that it could potentially be played in. I don't know if Greninja has a consistency, but Gardevoir and decks uh, or decks that play Alolan Volpex or Octillery, they can abuse this card. You promote your Octillery, uh, which is a good card on its own, but then now it allows you to play this Cyrus card. People tech in Alolan Volpex all the time, and this little small baby, uh, basic Pokemon can allow you to go ahead and Cyrus and really screw your opponent over. And then on top of that, you have the metal decks that we have been talking about. And this is going to be a great card for those decks to kind of get back in the game if they're falling behind, depending on the matchup. So Cyrus seems to be a very strong card, not to mention, not to mention that in Gardevoir decks, you can promote your artillery, 
play Cyrus, and then plead the last two Pokemon on their bench back to their hand. I don't think you can win after that. I, I just don't think so. All right, so this set is just amazing. Oh, yeah, and then an expanded. Oh, forgot about that one. Keldeo, yeah, can just rush in. You can use your Cyrus, and that's that. So I do like the idea of possibly doing that with some expanded decks. Cyrus is definitely searchable with things such as Tapu Lele, so... Yeah, pretty good card. If Tapu Lele wasn't in the format, I don't think it would be the greatest. But considering that Tapu Lele is, I think this card is going to be pretty strong. Alright, so this set is wonderful. And this is not even all of the spoilers. Let me tell you, I am just so excited for this set. I am more excited than a Pikachu with a bottle of ketchup, let me tell you. But thank you for watching so much. I hope you enjoyed that fun comedic video at the beginning of this video. And please subscribe to Rainbow Rocket. And I enjoy creating more content for you guys and look forward to interacting with you guys in the future. Thank you for watching and leave your favorite card that I reviewed today in the comments below. Bye.